so prepared. Good, okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, call to order the uh, joint New Pulse Town Board and Village Meeting of September 15th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You know, and I apologize, Tim. I think actually you need to call your meeting to order also. Yeah. Sure. Call the Village Board and Village Order. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, can we raise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the only thing we had on the agenda tonight was really the discussion of the joint or potential joint municipal center. Does anyone want to add anything to the meeting? Yes, um, I would like to add the, um, <clears throat> the fire district. As you may know, the village passed a resolution some time ago requesting a joint meeting with the town, which has yet to happen. So I would like that on the agenda. I will add that. And just so you know, the request that was made, because it was actually at that meeting, it was never forwarded to the town. So, but. Uh, okay, I, I did approach the town board, as you know. No. Nope. Over there. Yeah. No, I was there. Thank you. Yep. Any other additions? Yeah, uh, on I'd, the, I'd, I'd like to add one other sure. thing. Um, I want to take uh, the, the pulse of our village board regarding the uh, broadcast of Wednesday evening's town planning board versus our village planning board. Village board. Village board. We both scheduled the first time this question which wants to go out and live TV. Okay. And it's just since your, we're it's here, your, dis your decision. Our decision. Right. Yeah, you know, I apologize. Uh, it's actually your decision. I mean, we're glad to discuss it, but I just want us to do a vote publicly. That's oh, that's fine. It, it's and just so you know, it's always whenever we do a special meeting or a meeting is done off schedule, whatever is the normally scheduled meeting always takes precedence. Right. So, if you want to defer to our meeting, so for example. Tomorrow night's meeting is going to be a large presentation meeting. You're welcome to let the TV people know. But I'm welcome for you guys to discuss it. So I'll add it. But the, the tradition is always, or it's the always tradition, been. right, is not to include a, a village specific discussion topic at right. the joint meeting. So I'm fine, I'm fine. It'll take, I'm fine. anticipating it'll take a quick moment. <laughs> right. so I'm fine with as that. As a housekeeping it's fine. item, let's just. We're good. Can we, can we also just add a two-minute conversation about joint meetings going forward? Do you really think that's going to be a two-minute conversation, or it's a wishful two minutes? Do you, do you have a topic for what the joint meeting well, on, or just joint meeting? And, just and just if we want to discussion. Yeah, just just if we want what kind of schedule we would like going forward regarding you know, joint meetings. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. You okay. good? Yeah. Okay. So I'll move that the agenda be amended with those items on we have time. for the town. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 You actually have to move for the village, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, I move we accept the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And do we have any public input? Do we have any public input? Do we have any public input? I will take that as a no. I think I might have just seen a hand go. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have public input? Dave, please. Do you want a report on the building now or later? Is that part of public input or? We can no, sort of either way it could be, right? You but tell me more. Yeah. Uh, you have more information than I do. Do we have any if, any, if nobody else has a public comment, let's let him speak here. It doesn't matter whether it's a. I'm more than happy to let him speak during our meeting, too, if you yeah, want. Yeah, well, that's all right. All right, Thank so you. we can do it now or later, whatever he wants. What could be our first order of business? So, Dave, what's the only order we have? Real? So, right. Dave, we're going to make it our first order of business, and then we'll bring you up and include you in it, okay? Thank you. Okay, so without, and does anyone have any announcements? No. No? Okay, uh, without any announcements, I would like to go to our first, which is, uh, the discussion of the potential of a joint municipal center between the village and the town. And I would actually... I'd, I'd like to suggest that we ask Dave 
to give an update as to what the municipal space committee has done so far. Do you want to pull a chair up to the yeah, table, you know, Dave, or do you want to stand up there? Well, sure, sure. No, no, I'll take here. Oh, here. Who okay. does? Um, the building committee, which uh, the town was appointed uh, almost a year ago, uh, considering it myself, uh, Dave Lent, uh, Carol Roper, Josh Honig, and George Seafree. I've been meeting the first discussions and many of the early discussions were about where we could place a new town hall and um, the consensus finally after several meetings and looking at several locations was that it looked like the best place we could put the town hall facility, the new town hall facility, was right here on this property. Um, uh, the uh, in the process, uh, and one of the reasons that uh, uh, this uh, property became particularly interesting to us was that the village recently changed their zoning ordinance. So while we're not required to follow the zoning ordinance, there was this consensus in the committee that we wanted to, and that requires you, does it request you? It requires you to put an offset of not more than 10 feet from the road for the facility. Um, we've taken a look at uh, the facility, we, we had some studies, we looked at the question of parking, and uh, we're moving forward. We had uh, the point that we decided that we would go and do a, an analysis of uh, uh, and, and obtain some information from architects, and uh, we've had a selection process that said we wanted local, we wanted architects that uh, were uh, familiar with this type of building that had done large construction uh, buildings that were familiar with uh, the Wicks law and how that, that operated and uh, were large enough to be able to handle uh, uh, this uh, project of this size mostly with in-house and uh, we, uh, we have looked at uh, for uh, firms, they have uh, they gave a short presentation of us, and then we asked them to provide bids, and they have received the bids, and we are have those under uh, consideration at the present time. Uh, those firms are uh, Foundry uh, Architects, um, Scott Dutton from Kingston, Walker Associates from uh, Woodstock, and Joe Herbert's Joe. Hurwitz and Associates from uh, also from that end of the county. Um, we're, uh, we, we're in the process of analyzing those at the present time. We have talked to all of the architect uh, presentations and tell them that the village may want to join this operation. Uh, that's not a, uh, a given at this point and that's what our discussion here is tonight. Um, so I hope that's discussion. Um, the uh, what we feel that we can uh, they can do that and uh, the um, and we're ready to, to continue to work that and I hopefully in the near future uh, to the very near future to recommend a architect uh, firm to the uh, to the town board to be hired now uh, from a personal note there may be um, so feeling on some of you that I'm not interested, my personally I'm not interested in having uh, the village as part of this. That's not true. I would love to have the village part of this. However, I think that both parties, both the village and the town, have to know what the boundaries, how that relationship's going to occur, how that, how things are going to be handled. Uh, and that is needs to sit down and discuss that completely. Um, the village and the town have not had a great success, uh, at least long-term success, in, in doing things cooperatively, and um, the uh, and, and, and so that has to have uh, it has to be understood and have to go there. And also the question of modifying. But I have confidence that if uh, four men. Uh, Years ago, uh, over almost 300 years ago, um, 
that uh, sat down and decided how to go from the Articles of Confederation to the U.S. Constitution and how to get 13 independent states uh, to cooperate into the U.S. Constitution. Uh, if somebody could do it, then we can do it today. So, with that, Thank uh, you. if there are any questions, certainly um, uh, we're open to them. And if the, any of the committee would like to add, just certainly welcome to it. Josh? Uh, you don't need to raise your hand, Josh. Come on, if you got something to add, please feel free. It's not to add. It's, it's separate. It's part of this, but not part of this. In, in our discussions recently, um, we had talked that we had been considering that one of the first things that might have to happen is taking down the building, because no matter what the town does with that property, we're going to have to probably get it out of the way, whether we were going to build on it or sell it. And one of the questions that came up is, we know there are still records in that building, and we're going to need an answer from the town as to how long you're going to need to get out everything that's in there before we can even consider demolition. So that's just something for you to think about. I don't expect you guys to answer it tonight, but I'd like you guys to be sort of thinking about it because that's probably going to be the first step no matter what we do. Okay. Thank you, Josh. I might be able to answer your question. Um, we, we made provisions when we put into temporary town hall for two storage trailers. Uh -huh. Those files were supposed to be moved eventually into those storage trailers, not to be remediated, but hmm. just moved in there to get them out of the building. All right. Well, we'll There's ample room to do it. It's just right. We'll need it. We'll probably need a definition of um, what was the word you used that remediation. remediation. Yeah, when that might be. Yeah. And that's a real good point. Uh, and, and maybe I could just add one other comment um, in terms of time. We, we will need that building out of our way before we can do soil borings, which will be necessary before being able to do any of the structural work for the design. Not other steps, but for the structural work, and that happens quite early on. So right. We just, we just want to find out if there's any unknown factors that might come up, and taking down the building might give us an idea of some things we're not thinking about that could turn up. So we're trying to do this in a logical order, in a way that it's going to be the most efficient in the most efficient way. That's why we're curious about that. When, when I talked to Stacy, I asked her regarding are there desks, tables, chairs, etc., that we needed to be sensitive to being there. And my takeaway was that there's really not a lot there, but I've not been in it, so I can't personally speak to that. If anybody else has been, I think we, we took out everything we could use at that. No, actually, nothing. well, actually, in the, in the drill hole, there's a few shelving. Um, police records room still has some stuff in it. Um, Relatively. Everything else, except for some air conditioners, everything else is out there. It's a vacant space. Cool. And, and actually, Chris, with it. Oh, okay. Chris and I were actually in there all of about. Four hours ago, about four hours ago, we were actually in there searching for some fixtures and did not find them. Uh, but we will have to check with our clerk. Uh, there are some records still in there. Uh, as time passes, we're actually kind of fortunate because as time passes, those records are then able to be destroyed. Uh, the ones that need to be archived, uh, again, to what Chris said, we're going to be able to put them into storage. Uh, there is remediation. Unfortunately, there is some remediation of the actual structure that needs to take place. So it's not just tearing down, it's not having Chris show up with his crew and destroy the building. There's actually some remediation of the structure that needs to take place. Asbestos, for example. Actually, Chris, I believe there's no asbestos. I believe it's more of... The tiles, you know, floor tiles, yeah. the older tiles, they're asbestos based. Not a problem as long as they're, they're not friable. Space. That you still need to, or you have? That it would, it would have to be looked at to see if it needed. Yes. Before you know like deconstruction. I did get an email. They just forwarded me from Taylor Recycling out in um, sorry Maybrook, mm -hmm. and they were interested in doing the project. And they're also a facility that recycles. Yeah. You know, pretty much everything they, they take in. So. You know, it's, Another avenue versus you know my guy showing up in an excavator. Sure. It's good to be well, able to do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I think the majority of this conversation, and, and I want the village to join in. A lot of it is uh, I'm going to pass over to Marty, and one is thank you, Dave and Josh, for your updates. Uh, Dave, I don't even need to go back though 300 years for cooperation. I can go back just 
literally a couple days ago, we had a water leak in the village, and I know you had your crews, and we had members of our crew even there working on it. So it, I, I think it's over broadcast that the village and town do not cooperate. You would be amazed on how much cooperation there is between the village and the town and what does take place in the nuts and bolts in the everyday operation of this community. Uh, it takes place every day and less than a few days ago we had both crews working on a very severe water leak that shut off water to a huge part of the community would be an understatement, would it not Chris? Yes. <laughs> and it was fixed within... Uh, I got the call at 2 and the water was back on it. 10.30, so, my crew's punched out at 10.30. There you go. <laughs> so we do have a lot of cooperation between the two. So my also hope is I, I would like to, you know, hopefully we are going to move forward and, you know, I don't expect tonight to come up with a decision, but I, I do hope we have a productive discovery and, you know, Marty, I'd like to pass some of this off to you right now. Well, I think uh, just for the folks that are watching uh, and, and the folks that are here, uh, there have been a lot of discussions between the town and the village as to can we do this as a collaborative effort. Um, and I think as Dave said, and I would want to repeat it, that uh, there's a strong desire on many of our parts to see this be a collaborative effort because we see opportunities for efficiencies in the use of space that reduce our costs, our costs being town and village costs. Uh, so that we see as desirable to be together, to share spaces, to share services. So the folks wanting to come to a government building for whatever purpose, they don't have to wonder which one to go to or go to the town and be told to go to the village or vice versa. Uh, and we had asked for the joint meeting tonight to learn what issues the village still has before them in, order, in their due diligence, if any. Um, before they can make a decision as to whether or not that they feel they're ready to, to join in with, with the town and doing a joint building. Um, and if they have them, we'd like to, to know what they are so we can try to address them. And if they've already all been addressed, then we would love to hear an expression of positive interest from the village. And that's kind of passing it over to you guys, asking what would you like to discuss? I mean, we know where we want to get to. We want to hear you all say, yes, we're going to do this. <laughs> and I think where Marty is coming from is that several, I will say, meetings ago, but a month or two ago, we had asked that the village and Don, you indicated that you want to discuss it as the village board, and I believe you guys all have discussed it as the village board, and we just want to see where you're standing as far as the village board stands. As Is this a municipal center you're interested in going forward with us, and should we start making a a joint group that works on this between the village and the town or should the town really just look at this as a town project and go forward? Um, I think my board is, is aware of my position and feeling about this opportunity and I think it's a unique opportunity that we should we should look at very seriously and I would like to leave this evening's meeting with a commitment between the village and the town saying that we are interested in working together on a, a combined municipal building. I think some of the details, um, I would like to have additional community input. Um, I think some of the details we can work on collaboratively. We can work on with an architect. Um, a lot of the functionality of the building in terms of how we share space, I'm, I'm confident that those things can be sorted out, but I believe there's an important opportunity to improve the experience of accessing government for, for all of the town and village residents by having a municipal center. I also think that there's significant um, financial benefits to combining uh, a municipal center and doing things differently than the town having a, a completely separate building from the village. Um, so that that's where I'm at, and you know I want to pass it on to whoever is next. Well, I think every time we have discussed it, there seems to be a pretty 
pretty general interest on the part of the village board to move forward uh, with some sort of a uh, some sort of a joint uh, joint building, and, and the concept is has been um, pretty much embraced as a concept. I think. Um, what we haven't had a, a real chance to do is to make a lot of progress from the village standpoint on um, on what what it would look like and, and what the details would be. As Tim had said, Tim had said, um, I personally, it's my own personal opinion, um, I don't like this site, and I would not want to have uh, the joint municipal center located at this particular site. I think it's too far away from the center of town, um, but. I do embrace the concept. And I, I think we have tried as a, as a board, to, we've actually had a conversation as a board twice, once while Tim was away, and once a little bit uh, after he returned. And from my standpoint, we had a couple of presentations, uh, including the building committee and, and the supervisor. And in both those presentations, um, the concept of using the site in the village, you know, either at or near, the current uh, village hall site was was discussed. And the supervisor said it was actually her preference, uh, her personal preference, which not, not the building committees, but her personal preference. So the next meeting, that was the discussion I wanted to have with with my colleagues. You know, which location do we want to we want to focus on? Do we want to focus on a village site or a town site? But when I went to the building committee meeting, they pretty much said that that decision had been made, and that. Uh, this location, the Veterans Drive location, was um, was pretty much locked in. So um, that that troubles me a bit because if we're going to do a joint project, I, I think the village would want to be in on uh, at least the most major decisions. That being, I think, one of the one of the most major ones. Um, when I um, so after that, there was there was another visit to the, the village board uh, by the supervisor, and once again. There was discussion of the, of the potential of using either this site or the village site. Um, but once again, when I went to the building committee meeting, that was pretty much shut down. So I would be very interested in in, um, in having a having a discussion. I, I wish there was some way. The enemy, as I see it, is is time. You all have employees in, in temporary structures, and that's driving this to be a quick decision. I, I wish, and I'm, I'm searching for some way where we could find a way to address that short-term need in a way that would, would solve that problem for the town and take away this, this hand pushing us to speed. That's my, you know, the decision to lock into a particular site has been explained to me and I understand it and respect it. You guys can't wait around. You've got employees sitting in, you know, sitting in metal, metal containers. Uh, so I understand that. Um, and I wish there was some way to, to um, to address that issue while we could then at our leisure and, and to really together from the start, you know, talk about a, a joint project. So that's my, my two cents. I think let, let's all uh, comment before we respond to anything. Okay. Um, one thing that I'm curious about is um, if there has been a OSHA or what have you report on the condition of the town hall that can be looked at in terms of the structure, um, any health hazards, of which we obviously know are there, otherwise you would not have vacated the building. And then also if there are any concerns about any contamination to soil or anything else of that nature on the property that would need any remediation above and beyond, you know, demolition. Um, and I actually would like to see, in addition to that, um, basically a, a, a assessment to the village hall site as well. Um, you know, we can all take a walk through it, but I think that if perhaps one of our engineers were to take, you know, even a half a day or a day and give us sort of an um, assessment of the conditions, any concerns, um, you know, essentially a building inventory, which I certainly don't have that. Um, capacity to do, but I would like to see that, and I think that would be really good information for us in terms of moving forward. And I, I do obviously feel like this is a very important thing for us to be doing, otherwise both of our boards wouldn't be here tonight. As I
told the town supervisor when she first came to our meeting to discuss the project, it sounds like a great idea and I'm very interested. It just comes down to the details and it seems like a lot of the details need to be worked out after the fact. So maybe it comes down to team building and I just want to commend uh, Councilman Torres and Councilman Irwin for actually reaching out to me in advance to see if I had any questions or what they could do to help get me uh, more comfortable with the whole process and they answered all of my questions and I'm very thankful for their willingness to work together and not just criticize us. Thank you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of an exploration of a joint municipal home, we'll call it a home for both of our uh, governments. Um, as some of you know, I'm, I'm actually in favor of a closer bonding than that. Um, but we'll leave that aside. And in the absence even of an, any form of consolidation, I'm very strongly in favor of intermunicipal collaboration. <clears throat> I believe we would have many motivations for collaboration if we were in the same facility. So I would like very much to see us uh, take the next step in forming a committee that would explore seriously what it would take for the two municipalities to cohabit a single facility, what uh, efficiencies would be uh, achieved or you know, predictably achieved, and then what possibilities we could explore for other forms of collaboration if we are in the same location. So I'm very much in favor uh, of that, knowing that there are many uh, projects that are wonderfully interesting and potentially very beneficial that don't come to effect. So I'm not now prepared to say, I know that if we only take this step, we'll work it all out. But I think we, uh, I think we should and I make that a strong should. I think we should uh, explore seriously the potential for collaboration and cohabitation of one site. What, what, I've, what I've just heard from, from our board, I believe, is a willingness to begin the exploration process to try to figure out what a combined municipal center would look like. The one challenge that I think we need to address here tonight is the concern that, that Don has raised. Do we pursue this site um, where we're currently sitting on Veterans Drive, or do we look at a, a, di a different site? And Don has mentioned the pit, and there's obviously also the existing Village Hall parcel. So my, my, my takeaway from these comments and from previous village discussions about this is that conceptually we're willing to try to explore details, try to identify where some of the hurdles will be. Um, but it, it seems like the near-term hurdle that we need to address is which location. Um, I mean, if we agree to move forward as two boards and the joint building committee can then explore and make that recommendation, is that something that we need to, discuss, to decide today to move forward? I'm not really sure. I think it all has to do, Dennis, with what kind of a timeline we might want to move a project forward on. Um, as Dave mentioned, the existing municipal space committee, which obviously is made up of folks appointed by the town board only, um, has solicited proposals from four architects. We're in the process of reviewing them, as Dave said, for meeting tomorrow morning uh, to review those proposals. Um, and we would, I, I think the committee is likely to be at a point then where they would be ready to make a recommendation as to what firm to, to be engaged. Um, if I'm following what I'm hearing from your folks, it, it has to do with, well, let's get together and chat. 
let's get together and consider different sites. Um, and, and well, I, I only heard that from Doc. I, I don't know that. Okay. Well, so so one of the things then is let's consider additional sites. And other comments were uh, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of exploration of a home. Um, and interested, but what are the details? Um, wanting to understand what the health of the present building is now. Um, and, and I presume that's because you visualize that that's part of the decision-making process to, to know the answer to that. Um, and, and some of those things have been considered perhaps more in depth by the town than by the village. Uh, and, and now I'll just speak for myself. When, when I was appointed at the end of June and immediately got immersed in, in this part of, of the town's um, project list uh, and, and chatted with you all, um, I, I expressed my personal opinion early on that there were perhaps two major areas where, uh, when, when I was being asked, well, what we got to do an evaluation, what should we be thinking about? Um, one was the philosophy as to where should we be these would be where, where the, our constituents are. Uh, and the other was what are the economic impacts of picking one site compared to another. Uh, and I guess I would personally would, would like to have been hearing that that due diligence by the village board, what's our philosophical position uh, and, and what are the economics uh, might, might already have been considered. but but. I'll share with you what, what my thoughts are in, in, in regards to, to those. The philosophy is a little more difficult for me to speak to because that's a personal thing. You all are representing only the 7,000 village residents. Um, we're representing those 7,000 plus another 7,000 in, in the town outside of the village. So, so I, 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 can't, I can't address that. The economics of it, though, um, the analysis that we've done has suggested looking at, at three sites most recently. The um, Municipal Space Committee looked at, I think it was maybe 12 sites in, in their report. Not all of them would have been conducive to, to a joint building because some of them were remote to the village. Um, but, but among the three that, that have been mentioned tonight, um, two of those sites have the poten a, a bigger potential in my mind to increase our tax variables than do the third. Um, the one that I think offers the least opportunity for new rateables is the present moldy building site. Uh, because of its configuration with a right-of-way running through it, it's the second means of, of egress. Uh, it leaves a relatively small portion of that site that's developable, and part of that is consumed by this community center and its parking demand, um, further reducing the potential for development on the site. Um, if we look at the pit, it may or may not be available because somebody may have a contract on it. I don't know the answer to that, but I know that there's been presentations made to the village um, to develop it, and I'm going to presume <coughs> that the, the person making a presentation had site control before he chose to come to make a presentation. Uh, and, and, and my personal opinion, just my personal opinion, I, I would not be inclined to want to exert eminent domain in order to acquire a site that somebody already has site control on. Uh, I might feel differently were that not to, to be the case. The third site is your village, present village hall site. Uh, I see that as a valuable site in terms of the, the, what a developer might pay for because of its strategic location. The same things that might draw the village board to say, well, that's where we want to be because of its strategic location. Um, and and in, in doing a sale of it, it would, in my judgment, definitely be a, a boost to our, our rateables. Um, so when I look at the economics of the three sites, I discount the, the pit because somebody, I believe, already has site control on it. Uh, and I then I'm weighing two, and I'm saying one has a lot of value economically, uh, both in terms of what it could be sold for, the other one does not. One has a great potential for increasing tax rateables, the other one does not. Um, and it leaves me very comfortable with what my colleagues are, are also thinking, which is the, the present town hall site is the preferable one. For what that's worth, and you all thinking.
And I think I'm sorry just to kind of go along with what Marty is saying there and to Don your comments, which is, you know, discretion is the better side of valor. Uh, and the speed of which we move at, I don't want anyone to think that our employees are sitting out there in squalor or in difficult situations. Uh, we have them in a situation which is much, much better. And from what we had, and, and Rebecca, we do have reports on the condition of the building. Uh, we don't have ground reports because no borings were done, but I, I don't believe anything necessary. But borings to what Marty was referring to are actually to what is under the ground because of the plans. Uh, there's been some plans floated about uh, for a three-story building and, and whatnot. Uh, and, and again, I think what we're hearing here, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is the discussion is, and, and I was there the other night when uh, there were plans presented, and Marty, to your point, yes, there is someone that does have uh, a ability to develop that property down in the pit, and the property we're sitting on here does have a little bit more of limited, it's limited by a couple pieces. One is uh, just to the south of us here is a park and it's designated parkland for which both federal and state funds have been used on and those cannot be encroached upon uh, and then just to the north of us here is a property that's privately owned so this is a restrictive plot for which it cannot get egress in and out for much else so it's what makes it a very attractive plot as far as we're considered uh, I, I think what I would like to do is, and I do want to hear from Dan, and I, I, I do want to hear from Kevin, and, you know, Dennis, I'm sorry you only spoke to two members of you. You would never reach out to me. If you would reach out to me, I would gladly speak to you, as you and I have spoken in But you criticized our entire board without having reached out to us. That was my point. But I'd much rather move together collaboratively than focus on the past. Uh, I apologize that you felt I've ever criticized your entire board. To the best of my knowledge, I have never criticized the entire village board. If I have, I apologize, but I have not. And as you and I have had discussions in the community, uh, if you would reach out to me, uh, I've been uh, around this subject and around this for quite a while, including moving the police department in as quick as we could. And we have members sitting here that had tried to move the police department for 10 years prior to me even coming on the board. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't want to think that this, anyone that believe though that this is something that is a piece that can only be acted upon with great speed. I want it to be acted upon with a lot of thought and process. We already share a lot of the offices that we're looking to share. We're looking to share the, an office for the police, for which we share. You know, we already share the assessor's office. This would be a sharing the assessor's office in one location. The justice courts we share. This would be sharing the justice courts. Uh, those are services that, it, to, to Tim's point, which would help us, you can go to one location and get service and not have to run around multiple offices. So I think I, that is I, where we're getting I can to. add to that. Every single day, multiple times a day, and people Tim, show up at Village Hall looking for Town Hall. I imagine it's the same thing at Town Hall. And, and Tim, I was there late. I am usually in Tim Town Hall anywhere between one and a half to two and a half days a week. And there's not a single day that goes by that someone does not come in. And unfortunately, and there, there you go, our clerk will tell you, and they all take it well, we need to redirect them to another location. So uh, I think that is the goal here. Uh, as far as using the village location, uh, you know, to what Marty said and to what Mr. Rocco said, uh, you know, and Tom and I have worked together for multiple terms now yes. on many different projects. And uh, it's trying to centralize services and we've had a Joint Municipal Committee working on it, and I think what our goal just alone is here tonight is to try to get the boards to put together a joint municipal team of members of our boards to discuss it. But again, I do want to hear from Dan, and I want to hear from Kevin. Yeah, you know, what I was hearing from the Village Board is a, a willingness to move forward with some questions, and I think that a number of those things will get answered kind of once we step into the door and go forward with this. And it is a bit of a leap of faith. I absolutely understand that. I concur with uh, what my colleague, uh, Councilman Irwin, said relative to why we are focusing on this site. One thing I, I would like to bring up is I know that there's been some confusion 
with the building committees and inviting the village and, and I would hope based on today's conversation that we don't have that issue going forward that when there's a meeting that everyone is noticed together when that will be and, and I'd also ask and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here if there is a, a, a want or a need from the village board to to change the structure of the committee to include someone who is specifically from the village I don't know if that's something that would make people more comfortable or if people feel that's at all necessary but I did want to bring it up well, I think the discussion tonight is about creating a new committee mm -hmm. comprised of people that are in the state. Sure. Um, so I, I, my sense is the building committee has pretty much done their work. I, I don't know if there's a lot. You know, guys, the board are going to do this, or yeah, I, I, I didn't envision that the board would create a committee of trustees and council people and the town building committee to continue on as well. Is that what you can see about? I, I see a hand out there, and. and Josh? I guess it's up to us. Well, I wanted, I wanted to let no, I don't mind. No, I, I, would. I wanted to let everybody finish because I, I was going to address a couple of things. I and I'm mind. sorry, Josh, you just use the mic just because it okay, picks so up so much I, better I, I, on I, TV. I, 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 Tell the folks who you are, please. So, okay. um, two things, just some information from the past and then... And I'm sorry, just, inter just say your name again. Josh Honig, Thank you, Josh. Building Committee. Thank you. Um, so, Don, I know you've mentioned the pit. When we did this the first time, that was the ideal thing, but we were told it's out of play. In my mind, by the way, it's like there's a project coming forward. I don't know how it, if it's going to pass the muster with the village after going through. We don't, you know, it probably will, but I don't know. If it were in play, I personally would have different feelings because our, our mission when we started the first time was to bring government as close to the people as possible. So back six, seven years ago, we thought, well, if both governments were near each other, if they miss one building, they just walk next door to the other. Um, one of the things that I, I want you guys to consider when you're thinking about it is, if we decide, or we're thinking about using the village site, that you have to consider that you would probably be displaced for at least a year. You'd have to find some place to go, because you couldn't be, I don't think you could be in the buildings if we were going to use that to build a center. Uh, another thing where Don's bringing up uh, the committee and the structure of the committee, we have, we've been looking at it from this point of view, so uh, just so you can share why we had, you know, you might have perceived an attitude or something. As far as we're concerned, it looks like, and I could be wrong, that 70% of the building would, that we would do would be town and about 30% would be village based on... So, so I think that's the best. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm being generous. I mean, it's <laughs> closer to 15, but I'm saying, at best, let's just say 25, 75. So the building would be more, much more of it would be utilized by the town, and we would have a much greater investment. So it's hard to figure out, I would say, in trying to put together how you're going to look at it, you have to figure out how you would balance out that committee based on usage and, and our, our input, you know, what we have to put in financially and stuff like that. Um, Rebecca, in terms of reports, there were reports as far back as 2006 on this building. I, I, I brought this up to town board meetings, but you guys weren't there to hear it. So right. there was a report. Um, Alfondre Engineering was brought in in 2006 under the Don Weiland administration, and they wanted to do all this expansion, and he said to them, wait a minute, you got to, there's all these problems with the building right here and now, and you've got to address it and stuff like that. In 2008, I have a report from the state to the clerk's office where the clerk had been putting in for years to get funds to uh, upgrade files and stuff like that. And the state report said, we can't consider you because of the leakage in the building and the possibility of mold and records. records. That building wasn't built to be a permanent building. It was a... Uh, what? Not a legion. Amer it was an American Legion Hall, which was... And there are no fire breaks in the attic. That building, if it had ever caught fire while they were in it, God help us all, because that building would have gone to the ground right away. But and I think the town does have some sort of reports when they got out. But there's plenty. There's plenty of indication. Um, Cal Ropa was working on the building when she was in office. They've been trying to get out of that building for years, knowing how bad it was, because they've been different administrations over the years have been told that. Probably going as far back as, as Dave. I don't know if you did. You ever try to get out of the building? But I know from Carol on. And Don Wyland, there were all sorts of problems with the building. That's and everybody, 15, 15 years ago. Right, people were aware of it for a long time. It's, 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 I, it, that's not what, I'm sorry. I, if you don't mind me, just. Sure, okay. sure. I, I'm curious about the report 
and it reports in terms of what led to the evacuation. Oh, okay, because I thought you were yeah. talking in terms of trying to no, salvage no, no, the no, building, no. and that building is not as... No. We've been told by every... Mostly air quality. No special... Mostly air quality. No, no, but no special no. testing no. that has been done that confirms that, that it's anecdotal, but that the number of employees working in there who were struggling with respiratory issues, that they don't have any more. Right. Well, no, since, I've since, almost myself. immediately since they, they moved out of the, the building, uh, along with what we can visually see, saying there is mold. Uh, my understanding is that there's no, rem there's probably no remediation work necessary to demo the building because of the mold. But that there might be other things if there's friable, uh, if, if there are there's asphalt and tiles that, that could break up in the particles get in the air. Friable is a term that you. Um, or if there's insulation of pipes that isn't encased, that, that, that they have to be. Removed. Okay, I, I just. Um, to back up into my head a little bit. Part of the reason why I also asked that question is um, just in thinking that it may be, um, um, we may have better potential in terms of getting funding assistance due to the condition. In terms, you know. Good question. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. That's right. a very good question. Mm -hmm. Where's our leverage? Right, we, <laughs> right. we're forced into the situation. Yes. And and I think some part of that question is, and I, I apologize, Josh, is it was answered though, is we were able to get seventy, eighty thousand dollars from our local congressional representative to move, okay. or seventy. I apologize, seventy. Seventy response. Are you yes. talking about John Bonsa? Yeah, Bonsa. Oh, it was 50. seventy or. I believe it was fifty. I apologize. I think we got that before we had the problem at yeah. town hall. So it was to move. I apologize. Fifty. There you go. I'm over over exaggerating my remember it was money. So there Smart. you go. We'll Thank you. I have Dan up here who will help me. So it was fifty thousand because they did realize that it was an issue and that was from John Bonsa. That was from right. Senator uh, Bonasek. So you know, if it would yep. help to get some yep. more formal assessments Good point. in terms of the condition, which you know, if if we can formally to get um, an official document or what have you, official report saying that this building is, is most certainly uninhabitable and must be demolished. And or the other reason why the committee was looking for a commitment from your board to move forward is because what we're, we're looking at cost, we've always looked at cost mm -hmm. on all the things, cost to the community. So it was hard for us to conceive of, of moving ahead on a lot of this without a firm commitment from the village and the reason being the most obvious one so let's just say we're going to look at the village property who's going to pay for that assessment we are and and if it's a point we're just doing it while you're still deciding if you're in or out that's going to cost the town more money and more for, for more you know for an engineer for whoever's going to look at it or an architect and stuff like that so to move forward we need to have a commitment that, that you're on board. Some of the things have to be worked out in terms of, like we said, I know you guys want answers as to what your commitment would be. But we have to know that there's a genuine commitment to move forward before a lot of money is expended. Because, again, we're under it. We do feel under it. We did feel under a time constraint because it's that building that they're in is costing the town a fortune to maintain operation. One thing that people don't get, the public doesn't get, and I certainly hope you guys get it, is building a building, the cost of the building, is nothing compared to operational cost over a long period of time. When we've been talking to architects, we've been talking about building a, a building for 100 years. You might have to tweak it a few times, but it's a building that's going to last, and it's also going to be energy efficient, because nothing, and all that stuff, you know, like even your building there is, is not energy efficient. It basically would have to go to the ground, is, is some, what some people have told us off the record, if we were to look at that. And that's why I'm saying um, the very first night, one of Don's questions was, he, he had said at a meeting I was at, oh, we have a lot of things to do, and we have to see how that's so, And it, You didn't say get in the way, but you were saying, you know. No, we, I think I said it would dominate our church. It would dominate, would, right. That's, that's so, okay, that's what I'm asking. You said it would dominate your thing. So that was part of your concern, and I, I understood that. So that's all I'm saying is, all these questions I, you guys certainly need to consider, but we've been looking at it, okay, well, how long is that going to take? Is this going to take a month? Is it going to take six months? Is it going to take a year? Because 
we've been anxious to, to move forward. Um, we've been moving because the architects tell us that even if you guys committed, it would, you know, we could keep moving and, and plan out space that would be the space. How it's built in is another thing, but just in terms of how much space we would need. So you could do a needs assessment for what the village needs and what we need. That might be a start. But we need to get some sort of a firm commitment. That's what we think. And in terms of how you set up the board, that's up to the town board and you guys of what you want to set up for a committee. This committee's been working eight years on this, but like I said, we looked at so many sites. There's not a lot of sites around New Paltz that are going to work for this type of situation. That's it. Can we hear from Kevin? Sure. First of all, I'd like to welcome the new village board to our first joint meeting. It's the first time we've had an opportunity to get together. Um, and I think that you know, recent circumstances are going to make it a lot easier for the village and town boards to collaborate on a project going forward. Um, I think that to the extent that there is a joint committee, I don't think it should be weighted on the basis of the town having 75% of the building and you having 25%. It should be equal members from the village and town board making that decision. It shouldn't be weighted. Um, so. Uh, I think once you make your commitment, I think you're prepared to make a commitment at some point soon, then we can get into the nuts and bolts in terms of determining whether or not there should be separate lots, one town lot, one village lot, whether or not we should have some common systems or separate systems. I know for a fact we can share space, so there'll be some areas where you're sharing space and some space will be separate. So you can get into all that. You can get into whether or not we need designated parking areas or things like that. That's the nuts and bolts. But I, I think this is a great opportunity for the two boards finally to do something very positive and proactive for the community and save the community a lot of money going forward. And so I'm happy the village board is here and I think we'll be able to move forward. I think we have some. Carol and Dave will look like they wanted to say something. Yeah, I have a peripheral question. At the village board meeting I went to, Rebecca, you and I think Dennis were going to go through the village offices and see how much space you need. Have you done that analysis? No, yeah. Okay. So you don't really know how much space you need? It wasn't a matter of looking at how much space we need. It, there's um, offices that were um, part of the old, essentially what was police, um, the police department. Um, and our idea was to go through and, and um, look at what's there, what's empty, and conditions, and just just to kind of look at the whole building, which Tim has also been doing. Um, unfortunately, I, I was Ill, I've been ill since June, and um, I've missed some meetings, and I basically couldn't even walk Main Street for that matter. So um, my availability has not been up to par. So, um, you know, I'm finally 90%, so I'm able to walk here. I started some deer along the way. One of them ran into onto 32, which took me a little while to get here trying to run after a deer. I'm sorry, but um, essentially it's just, it hasn't been a good time in terms of being able to um, function, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yeah. It's, it's, it's still our we were looking more to take stock of what we had, not what we needed. Yeah, but it hasn't really been done. No. And, and I think I and I apologize to put any of you on place. I remember recently, and maybe Marty, you can answer that. There was a plan for a conceptual plan for three stories, twenty-five thousand square feet, and that number was at arrived at how? Yes. And, and not with detail, but yeah. Um, Joe Hurwitz came up with that number. Um, Joe Hurwitz is an architect that the town engaged to do some conceptual studies, the, specifically focusing on uh, what kind, what kind of a building might we fit on this present site where the where the moldy the town hall is. Uh, and in that analysis, he gave us an indication, sensing that combining the spaces, bringing in. Um, police and justice court, the aggregate space requirement would probably be in the neighborhood of $25,000 uh, square feet. Um, 
and that of that 25,000 square feet, perhaps 3,000 or a little bit more um, was necessary to accommodate the possible space needs for the village. And I have to caveat everything by possible space needs because we don't know the answer to that yet. The, the process that we will be going through, the first step in it is programming, and that's when the architect will be chatting with a lot of people, um, all of us, the department heads, employees, um, to learn what are the space that they have now, what is the space that they need now, which may or may not be the same as what they have now, and to do projections as to what the space requirements might be down the road. Uh, so, so that's how we got 25,000. There's nothing magic to it. Will that actually be what it is? Probably not. Um, my sense is it probably won't be more than that. But, but it ties into something else I wanted to comment. It, it, it goes along with what Josh was saying, where he was talking about the percentage of the building that might be attributable exclusively to, to the village. And, and, and you used a percentage that's very consistent with what we were hearing from architects, 10, 15 percent maybe uh, of the total space. You take 25,000 square feet, you take 15 percent of that, you're still getting into that same 3,000-ish neighborhood. I would. My, I would want to make another comment, though, about the fact that the balance of it isn't necessarily the towns, and this goes to the economics of the relationship between the town and the village. Um, and, and the negotiations, if you will, that we will have to go through in coming up with a, a, an intermunicipal agreement as to how, how we will own this together. Um, my, my sense is there's three components. It's not just two. It's not just tech, village, 15% or 3,000 square feet in the town and rest because there are some functions that are in there that, that are for both of us, S such as the justice court and the police department. And we'll have to, in my mind, there's going to be three categories. There's you, you me, and ours, and, and us to mutually agree on, well, what is yours and what is ours and what is the rest? And then how does that affect our relative responsibilities to pay for it? I think that's a, a very important point, and I appreciate that Kevin brought up the idea that looking at this building based on the actual offices that the village would use versus the space that the town would use, I, I don't think is a, is a useful exercise because you know, we all know that every village resident contributes to the police by their tax dollars. So you know, every village resident contributes to uh, the A fund. Which as a town on. resident. As a town resident. And every right. every every village resident mm -hmm. is a town right. resident. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So that uh, differentiation, I, I don't think, takes us down any useful path. Um, I think the, the way we look at this is village residents are town residents, village residents are town taxpayers. And, uh, I think that's a, that's a very important point to, to be mindful of. And, and I believe Tim and Tom and, and Marty have all hit on, on very succinct points to this, which is there are services that we already share and we've looked at and we will continue to share. Uh, the, the very structure we're in now, you can see we're utilizing for meeting space and that is actually one of the larger purposes. I mean, even look at your own village structure and look at the size of the justice courts compared to the space you use for your village operations and it's it's very large you know the, the court system takes a lot of space and they're getting un unfortunately they are not getting less busy they are getting more busy we have many jurisdictions writing infractions within our community so uh, i'd like to say i'd like to agree with you too is it is yeah, I do not see at all this committee, and Don, to your point too, which I don't see this committee at all being embodied at all by what percentage of space you're going to use, but this is going to be a shared space by our community, and notwithstanding the very space that we're sitting in. You know, we're not saying that this space that we're in right now also will not continue to be used by community groups along with, and I know, I don't know if all of you did, I know some of you took a tour, and Kevin and I have been over there several times over to Asopus, and they use a lot of shared space there. Uh, and Asopus is, is a very, geographically, is a very large area, and they were able to encompass a lot in that, plus use other spaces in their community. So, thank you, Tim, I do agree with you. I want to also thank uh, Kevin uh, 
when I, you know, the, and I'm sorry, I, Dave, we will get to you. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, Don. No, we'll get to No, Don, no, please, yes. Yeah, I was thinking Kevin. Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. Um, when I heard the concept of 75, 25, the notes I made on my piece of paper here is partners or junior partners, and I think we want, we want, to, be, we want to be full partners. Um, there's been a lot of discussion of what is needed from the village board. And speaking purely for myself, I think what I would like to see from the town board, or town council, pardon me, um, is an understanding that you've put a lot of time and effort, and your committee's put a lot of time and effort into a path forward. And I'm, um, I'm looking for reassurance that if we do decide to move forward as a town and village entity, uh, that you will be open to new ideas and other concepts as well. I think, you know, coming into this room, my sense is, and it wasn't a sense, that very, my conviction was that uh, the town was pretty much locked into a path forward. You put some time into it, you put some years into it. Um, but I still want to look at the village side. And that's not what, what, what people walked into the room, uh, room necessarily seeing. So are you all open to a, a process where we'd, we'd look at, look at ideas that haven't been uh, coalesced around yet? It, it, you're looking at me, so I, I will answer. Oh, I'll, I'll just answer it with my own me. opinion. Uh, they've been coalesced since. Uh, get, seven, get, seven or eight years. So for seven or eight years, we've looked at many, many spots, uh, and uh, again, some have been spoken to here. Uh, one of the big ones is is the advantages to this site over to the disadvantages of the site within the village. Uh, notwithstanding even as simple as the desperate need for parking within the core of the community would be a very simple one to point out. Uh, also the very simple fact of being able to uh, use this site and be able to do demolition at this site and not have to relocate any employees. Uh, so there's just many advantages to using the site besides using the core of the community. Our core of our community has some very desperate needs, uh, parking being one of them, infrastructure being another one of them, and adding more density of government into the core of the community, in my own opinion, is not the path that has been, I would see as being productive, nor the path that I've read from reports in the past seven or eight years. But again, that's just my opinion, and I have other board members here. I'd like to respond to that. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy to. If, if I were asked to, to vote on moving forward jointly, predicated on continuing to discuss the village hall site and the pit, I would be inclined to vote no, let's just move forward on the present site because I've done enough due diligence to be personally. 100% comfortable of those three sites for the reasons I mentioned before of picking this site. I, I think the other challenge that you run into um, with the pit in particular is then you've just added a significant cost to this project. Um, acquiring that land um, and not having, and then also removing that land from our tax base. I don't think is the direction that we want to head in. I think we have this, for lack of a better word, awkward piece of property here that really is not useful for almost anything but its continued use as a, as a municipal property. Um, I, I think we have a, a great opportunity to keep the pit, hopefully, on the tax roll with a new project. Um, I think that's, that's you, you don't want to add, this is, hopefully we can get some empowerment grant money, hopefully we can get some money from uh, another prod, or another program that Senator Bonasek sent us a note about um, in terms of supporting municipal projects. Um, but this is going to cost our community money. So the more money, the more prudent we are with Financial decisions, the better. That's that's the way I see it. And acquiring land, I think, is a uh, is going to add a, a huge a huge headwind to this project. 
I think it's difficult to make the argument that the current village site mm -hmm. is worth so much in readables and is of such high value and say that we would not have funds available to purchase additional land. If that village site is so valuable, as you have said many, many times, and there would also be the ability, I also, I don't necessarily agree with the, um, with the view, and yeah, we can discuss it, I might convince me, but that this site is um, not appropriate for other use. Right next to this site is apartment complexes. And um, I think housing located next to a park and a pool, you know, there's the egress, and we could put a walking bridge over that. I think families would want to live at this location next to the park and the pool. I don't see that this, this personally, I could be convinced, I haven't heard an argument yet that, that tells me that this site is only appropriate for, for municipal buildings. I think someone who was looking to develop you know, residential space, just like next door, uh, would look at this site and, and be able to do something with it. So I think if we, so I, yeah, I, I guess I heard two no's to, you know, to the question, are you open to looking at other possibilities? But I, I think you know, there are other possibilities. And I, I, I think when I travel around the country and I look at you know, America, the things that I like about, about going around, around the country is when you go to a, a, a village or a town, generally in, in many places, in the center of town is the post office and city hall. And, and yeah, I, I think New Paltz with its traditional old time feel, I think that would be just right for our community to have the center of our government in the center of the community. I, I'm not saying there are no disadvantages, but I, um, the, I saw Marty have the same, uh, same PowerPoint on top of this well, pile. That, that's what, when yeah, you guys yeah. asked for more information, I asked Josh for some information, and this is what he, part of what he provided, and, and we circulated. No, I, I also brought that, the reason I brought that is in 2009, yeah. as, as you mentioned, Josh, when, when the committee recommended, made a recommendation, they made a recommendation for the pit. Now, that was after the years of study that you've spoken about. So I, I, um, I understand there may be differences that didn't occur at that time in 2009 in the, in the, in the um, condition of the property, but I, I guess I'm, what I'm hearing is that um, at the onset of this project, if the village is to, um, is to uh, consider partnering with the town on this, that decision's already been made. And, and take it or leave it, in, in a nice way. You're not saying take it or leave it. But that, that, you know, in, the, in, the, in the real world, that is the decision we're faced with from what I'm hearing. Well, well, you mentioned Tom, Tom had a comment on that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I didn't see that. I, want, I, I do want to uh, suggest, uh, although I don't want to quibble on the language, that we're not talking about chatting. We're, talk, we're not talking about chatting, an exploration by a serious uh, committee of perhaps two members of our board and two members of your board, and not for purposes of chatting, but true exploration. We don't have all the information you have. We have not had legal input. We have not canvassed our staff, for example, about what they need. I think we have work to do. And some of that work would be in a joint exploration of whether 3,000 square feet uh, of, let's call it, uh, exclusive use of space for the village is realistic, sufficient, uh, superfluous. I'm, I don't know, because I don't know. I don't think it would take forever. You have a lot of work that you've done. You're sitting on a lot of information. Your committee has gathered a lot of information. We need a couple of people to sit down and go over that information. It does not have to take months or a year. It can be done, I believe, by a couple of people working on our side, working with you, getting input from our attorneys, getting input from our staff, and coming up with a recommendation that we as a board can then provide to you. So, within a, a predictable period of time, after a serious exploration, I would be prepared to make a decision. I'd like to offer two, two, two thoughts, Tom. One is um, the first step in the architectural design process, it's called programming. 
And if I'm following what you're saying, it's precisely what you're saying, go and talk to all the people, what are your needs? Yeah. So for us to do it as lay people, uh, they're, they're going to only reproduce that. And none of us will really know until they're done with their study how many square feet that, that really represents. The second is, and I'd like to, to, to word this non-antagonistically, but you guys have had three months to do the other things you've talked about. Go talk to your attorney. And, and I guess you haven't done that yet, so you're wanting to start that now, and, and I, I would have hoped that that might have been done as part of your due diligence from the early conversations I had with you in July, for what it's worth. I would like to say one more thing, though. I, I happen to be involved very much because I was the chief operating officer of the facility and designing a 25,000 square foot space from scratch. Uh, and it would not have been done before the architect, without our canvassing our staff on exactly what they wanted. The architect helped us change our thinking about many things. So we did not wind up with a space designed by the staff. The space was still designed by the architect. But it was after serious input by me with my staff. So are you thinking that in that process you might come to a conclusion not to, to participate? I think that's not impossible. Uh, I would not anticipate that. Mm -hmm. So it could be done if we all tonight said let's, let's work together, you all could start that tomorrow. It's going to take us a couple of weeks to engage an architect anyway. So you'd still have time, perhaps, yes. to, to do that. That's, that's, that's my belief. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think that should be done collaboratively. I, I don't think it, it's really valuable to do that as separate boards. Like, whoever is collecting that data should probably be speaking to town staff and village yeah, staff I and agree. aggregating. Well, that would be the collecting. programming phase. I, I, I hear you. I, that, that's why I have oh, to feel like time, we I are... At that the point. proposals we have, the, the one architect's timeline for doing that is two weeks, literally. That's the first step in it. And I just read his proposal today, so. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, before I volunteer Dan to do something, I do want to hear your comments. Oh, no. I, 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 I've said uh, what I wanted to say about this. I, I do hope that we can move forward on this. I, I hear your concerns, but again, I think we really have to take the first step into the door and then we can do that and, and i guess then just on and kevin do you have any other comments no. i guess just on the town's part then and and just because you do know i'm involved in you know a, a few other very serious infrastructure projects water being included uh right now I'm, I'm very deep in the budget and a few other you know sewer is a, a very big infrastructure issue we're trying to solve too uh, i would like to make a motion that for the town board i would like to have dan torres and marty Irwin. Uh, represent the town in a joint committee with the village. Second. It, for discuss, I apologize for a discussion of uh, a joint community, a joint town village. Second, Paul. Oh. Any discussion? Uh, before I vote, I'd love to hear that the village said that they think that they're ready to participate in such a committee, and that they feel that two and two is a good number. I'm willing to vote. I think and, two and two is reasonable. And, and you understand what I say two is so it doesn't mean, it doesn't create a quorum. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. want to create two exactly. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to create a quorum situation. Exactly. So I, I'm presenting that for the town. And and Dan, I apologize if you weren't. No, I was going to volunteer. Uh, so okay. I'm happy that that. There's a vote on it now or defer to you. Uh, uh, no, no. All in favor? Aye. 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 So all on. Okay, I, I believe that uh, as a board we had agreed that. Don and Tim were going to participate, um, and I know that they have worked with the building committee. Um, so I'd like to move for the village board this essentially the same with Don and, and Tim serving on that committee. Second. All in favor? Wait, wait, wait. Is there any discussion? Oh, any discussion? <laughs> I guess you guys should give me the opportunity to decline. Yeah. Well, cool. here we go. I think the <laughs> The implications are yeah, yeah. accepting the premise on the table would be committing the village to no longer do business ultimately uh, at the Platic Hill, uh, Platic Hill Avenue location. That's what I've heard. Uh, that, uh, that looking at the village site is, uh, it's at least the two board members who spoke over there, 
indicated they were not open to uh, looking at uh, the village site. Um, and uh, I would just like to state that, uh, the implications of that for this board. And I'd, just, I'd like to talk about it a little bit more before we, uh, uh, we agree to it under those conditions. I, I, have a hard, I have a big problem with saying yes with that restriction put on. Uh, I, you know, I'd like some more discussion. Yes. I am very comfortable with having a municipal center at this location. I think for all the reasons that have already been stated, financially uh, being the prime reason, Village Hall is not the ideal situation for a joint municipal center. So if we are going to move forward and there is that restriction, I'm okay with that. And there are a number of other things that could be deal breakers. There was some discussion of us being a tenant of the town, which I would never, ever, ever want to do because I wouldn't want to have to negotiate with our landlord. But, uh, <laughs> as far as being in this location, I'm very comfortable with that. There will be many lawyers and engineers involved, Dennis, before we get to that point, so yes. I'm not sure if Don is saying that he would not be comfortable uh, or uh, he would not be open to a change of his mind. So Don, uh, I'm not sure, do you want to do this? I'd be uh, willing to serve. Um, I'm contemplating whether uh, I'd be willing to serve and also uh, be the single day vote on the, uh, on the uh, resolution. But yeah, I'd be willing to serve. Rebecca, do you want to comment further? Um, well, I guess the, it, it's not necessarily so much on the formation of a committee, but um, one of the reasons, and I, I think Josh may have misunderstood, but the reason why I would like to see inventory assessment at the Village Hall building, I'm, I'm not suggesting that the town would pay for that as a part of this project, but I think just in general as two municipalities with, with the same interests, um, it would be good to get an assessment. We don't know if, 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 we, if this were a project where we, both municipalities would end up here, what, what are we going to do with Village Hall? Are we going to sell it? Are we going to rent it? Are we going to renovate it? So that, that's the type of assessment that I'd like to see. Working together. Whoever we would hire to do mm -hmm. anything, if we move forward. The first thing is Don has it in that report from the center. We hire a professional to do a needs assessment. Yes. And a needs assessment, the, the offices are looked at, the people say what they need. But the professionals know based on this national standards and all that, and then the particular, you know, particular things that apply to this situation. And that's how, so then they come up with, in the first assessment actually, I'm not sure how we got to the other one, I believe. Well, we years ago said the town needed 27,000 square feet, but we don't have buildings of ground anymore, so that probably not the case. But the, the assessment needs to be done by a professional, not by our board or your board. Yeah. Like that. So that's the first, at, at a point, we, we come to an agreement. That's the first thing that gets done, and that's about two-week, three-week project for a profession. So what type of consultant is that? Is that, is that the architectural firm, or is that a different type of consultant? I think it would depend on what you, want the, what you want the information to focus on. If you want to know what's the building worth when we vacate it and want to sell it, that would be an appraisal by an appraisal. Right, if you want to know what are the physical issues or pluses of the building, and that would be an architect or an engineer. So it depends what your purpose is. And I, real quick, Tim, is uh, believe it or not, this information to Josh's point is based on standards, and I have a town hall employee here, and Chris, we both served, we all served on moving town hall, and the number of trailers that we had to put together was not done by accident, it was actually done by using national standards. And if you go out to our town hall, and I know many of you have been there, you can see everyone has the adequate space they need up to including we do have two trailers that we also use, but just for pure storage space. They are, lack of a better term, cold storage space. Would that be a good? Very cold. But we have some storage space that is simply used to hold documents. Uh, and so they're, they're, those stands, and Chris, you can speak to it also, I believe, they're they, they guided us very, very well, the mod space. 
in helping us decide what spaces we needed. So there, there's many, many standards out there, and there's a lot of it, but you're absolutely right. Is I don't think any of us sitting here at all know what your space needs are, but there are a lot of standards out there to guide us. I'd also like to put to both boards that we consider including some or all of the, the, the building committee members as part of this group and possibly also um, officially having representation from Chris Marks and Lou Terwilliger. I think each of those folks plus the folks who've served on the, the building committee should be part of this this discussion. And, and Tim, you guys are in a vote, but I think absolutely you are correct. We would be foolish to do without our building committee and then also through people that have been through this. I, I totally agree, but. Do you want them in consultation with the four members or as part of the group? I, I don't necessarily care how it's structured. I just want to make sure that we have access to their expertise and you, you have a motion right. on the table. Do right. you want us to dialogue with you while you're in your discussion phase? I don't want to intrude. I think it's best if we yeah. uh, just we make a decision about what and how we want to do what we want to do. Uh, I, I'm at least mildly concerned that Don is uh, kind of a, re a reluctant participant uh, in some ways. Although I heard him at the beginning of the meeting say that he was not opposed to this and that he had some enthusiasm for collaboration. Well, then let me be clear, because I don't want to be, uh, leave any concern in your mind. I am on board with uh, the concept of a joint municipal builder. I am personally not in favor of, uh, of taking the village site off the map, but I am a professional, I am an adult. And if the vote goes the other way, I would certainly honor that. Okay. Okay. Want to call on Mr. Mr. Mayor? Tom Davis? Aye. 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 Seeing as that vote, the motion will pass on all the day. Great. Great, because uh, we've we been... We're all together. And thank you, yeah. Forward yeah. Forward. I no, think it's thank the you. best it's thing for all of the 14,000 folks that live in the town and village. And so all I can ask then, uh, I would like to ask that is, uh, I, I don't want to ask it now, but if the four of you could get together sooner than later, yeah. and then, okay, uh, that's fine. The I'm sorry. Fine, uh, sooner than later, and then get a schedule out to both the boards on your meeting schedule and any type of uh, benchmarks that you want to set, and then also any consultation. Uh, I'm also very intrigued, and I'm not sure how to word it, and maybe Tim would have a better way to do it, but I do wholeheartedly agree, and, and this being here for a very long time, up to and including, you know, having my father's name in a bronze plaque sitting in the downstairs of the current village hall. Uh, I do have a soft spot for that area, Don, so please do not take it lightly at all that I do not believe that is not a space, but, you know, when you mention old communities, I, I also, even just traveling around the state, many of those city centers were built uh, turn of the century or just post and, and have since moved on. And we are at a point right now where, and I will use one of your village board members, even was able to walk here. And uh, yes, those same deer ran right in front of me and then I saw them standing there along the road. So I believe I was just ahead of you. So, uh, you know, we are at a point now where we, we need to decide where we're going next. And Tim, do you have an idea on how we can include them and include any type of other expertise? I, I, I just want to make sure we are not leaving out the information that has been gathered. Can I make a suggestion then? I, Please. Well, dear. <laughs> I, I think there are two committees, and, and I think we've all already addressed one of them. It's, it's the committee, I'll call it the executive committee, I don't care what it's called. Two Something. board members from y'all, two board members from us. Among the many things we have to do is negotiate the, the arrangement between us. Uh, and I don't, and, and I think that there's another committee that is the new joint municipal space committee. Uh, how many people it's composed of? Let's figure that out. Is it 
six or eight or some other number. No, My sense is not eight. I hope it's not. So, so maybe it's four, maybe it's six. That it, my sense is that I would recommend them equally balanced between village residents and town residents. Um, and that once we have appointed that, that we and the town, we the town would then dismantle um, or, or, or stop the present uh, municipal space committee because this becomes the, the new one. Uh, and, and my thought would be that you guys are going to pick three and we're going to pick three and that's the committee. To Tim's question about um, Chris and Rosanna uh, and, and Blue, you, Blue uh, and, and the folks on your staff, that they're consultants to all of us in, in my vision. And, and so they'd be consultants to the committee. Uh, and I would like to also suggest that each of our two boards appoint at least one person who's a liaison, well, just one person, who's a liaison to that committee, who, who would then be coming back, I'll speak for myself, if I were that liaison, as I am right now, and remained it, I'd want to come back every time we have the town board meeting, and I want the public to become up to date with, with where we're at, because I think this cannot be a successful project without transparency, public input, and I think it will be a successful project when we have that. Just like the, the bridge w was not a controversial thing, and it had design elements. And, and that's one area where there, there's going to be a lot of different voices that, that have different perspectives. Should it be contemporary, traditional, made out of wood or concrete or aluminum or whatever? And we'll have to work through those, but I believe it's got to be done openly and, and through participation, whether it's in meetings like this that are specifically to, to get the, the message out, uh, encouraging people to, to watch our meetings and then use the email uh, feature to send comments to any of us that they want to, but whatever way we can, social media, to make sure everybody's as vested as they wish to be. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is you form a subcommittee and you have those three members from each side. Yep populate the committee and have them actually participate in your meetings. I don't think you need a liaison if you you members are actually part of the meeting. Mm. I, I agree. You are the, you are the we are the liaison already. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think we've done. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate all the work we've just put into that, and I, I truly believe that was in. Well, let me say there is a scheduled municipal space committee meeting tomorrow morning. And I am a liaison. I am not a member of that committee. It's not my place to invite people to the committee, but the chair is here. And I would ask him if you would. <laughs> well, unless you all are going to resign. Uh, the committee. That with, uh, I plan to resign tomorrow morning. Yes. Uh, okay, so, so we'll, we'll so deal with that later. Uh, okay. That's okay. Okay. So. Okay. So uh, the next piece on the agenda was, uh, Rebecca, you wanted to uh, discuss uh, fire districts. Yes, um, this I know we've been discussing for some time. We um, have um, a presentation by um, a, uh, Terry Hannigan who has helped a number of municipalities in terms of um, creating joint fire districts. And I don't know if anyone has any questions about them. Um, but essentially what we need to do in terms of um, our role as, in, as two municipalities in order to form a joint fire dist district, each board needs to um, approve through resolution to, um, to pursue the creation of. And essentially what we are doing through that is putting it on the ballot of the ref referendum. Um, we're pretty much at the point where it's just about too late. Um, we've been trying for a while to get this through. The village has approved it. Um, um, and with that, I think, you know, Dan mentioned having more joint meetings. We haven't met since January. And I think if we could get back on a schedule to have joint meetings, that that would be a good idea so that things like this don't fall through the cracks. Would the fire district include emergency response as well? Could you form a district where both the fire protection and the ambulance service is included in the district, or do you have to form separate districts? 
I don't believe they're they're jointly. No, yeah. I believe I'm they're separate districts. And you would actually have because to join them. What's interesting about the districts is then you're able to spread the costs mm -hmm. of the protection over a larger base, which would include the college, which right now is exempt from police coverage, fire coverage. I mean, they do contribute a little bit mm -hmm. to fire and ambulance, but you're actually able to spread it across a larger base, which is the, the benefit to that. Right. The downside to that, and several years ago, we had a very large meeting on this, uh, and the majority of the community was, was not in favor of fire district at all, uh, is you're adding another taxing authority to our community and another government to our community, which is New York State is trying to reduce its taxing authorities and also trying to tax them. Uh, also is the complete uh, lack of participation in fire districts. Uh, traditionally, the votes that show out for them are on basis points of your community. Uh, they do not have to follow the HAVLA laws. They do not have to but use your polling sir, places. I, I don't understand. You said a word that I didn't Which one? On the taxi, as far as fire districts? Fire districts uh, have very low participation as far as voting on their budgets. They're allowed to make their budget votes be at their discretion. They are held at very short hours. This is true all across New York. I'm using New York State as the example. Uh, they do not be, need to be held at all of the locations that we are used to going to. Uh, they do not need to follow the HAVLA laws. They have participation rates, which are in the basis points, so which means they are less than one. They are. I did not say I was voting at all. I'm simply stating that these were facts that were presented uh, several years ago. I did not bring a notebook with me on fire districts. I was prepared to discuss it, uh, but it is a discussion. I'd be more than happy to discuss it in a joint meeting. Uh, but I do not believe we're in a community right now that is in looking for another taxing authority within our community. Uh, we have a village, we have a town, we have a county, uh, we have a state. Uh, you can say it's not a taxing authority, but it is a taxing authority. We have the college. And the way they're a taxing authority is they continue to take land off of our tax rolls. And they continue to add population businesses for which you and I gain no tax advantages from. Uh, they are building housing on their own, on their property. And their housing now includes their own restaurants, their own coffee shops. Uh, their own parking and everything. They are doing everything possible to ensure that their community stays within their community. Uh, so I, I don't know if we have a community right now that is looking to add another taxing authority within the, the boundaries of New Pulse. So just, just I, to follow I, up on your point, Jeff. Yeah. I think well, the the fire company and the fire protection um, for this community they have infrastructure needs as well. And those needs have to be resolved going forward. So if you could spread that base, make it a little wider, then you might be able to look at it, but then you have to kind of address um, Jeff's point, which is once you form the district and once the municipality appoints the commissioners, they're autonomous. I think, you, I think I'm being completely misunderstood. The whole point of the resolutions is to put it up for referendum, to put it in front of the public to vote on. Then they can vote it down. Well, I think, if, if that's I think the general consensus you, the you can pursue that as an option, but I think what you want to do is if you're going to do that, you should have your plan in place, and that plan might involve putting some cap on how much they can spend because you are creating another tax in jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So, but if you came up with the right plan, it might make sense. Or to Kevin's point is, is I know the supervisor had been in discussion and the previous mayor had been in discussion with both fire and rescue <coughs> in meeting their infrastructure needs in building a joint emergency service center and using funding that's out there available. So could that funding actually take place of having a fire district? To Kevin's point, which is you're now spreading those dollars out over a state and a federal taxable incident instead of just saying, well, we're just gonna say and take this and put it out into the public's hands. We were elected to help make these decisions and guide these decisions through a process. Part of the process should really include our due diligence in looking at a joint emergency service center 
which has been discussed on and off. I know, uh, Tim, I don't know if Susan had discussed any of that with you. I know she had, and she has, and, and some of it had been discussed with uh, the previous mayor. And so there, that is also another avenue to look at. They do have needs, they do have structure needs. I absolutely agree to that, and they deserve them. Can we meet those through other forms which does not create another taxable jurisdiction within our community? Our community has great needs, great infrastructure needs, and emergency services is one of them. What can we do to do it at the most affordable way? And I, I think that's our responsibility. So my personal opinion is, and going through this over several years and, and several different versions, is I, I think our real first responsibility is, is should we be looking at, before we just say, let's take this and put it out to the voters, should we be looking at a joint services, emergency services structure, which there has been land identified for that, which would be out of station two? And is there are funds available, which also has been event identified also through the New York Rising Funds? Okay. So, so that could be very viable. Okay. So if we could start meeting on this on a regular basis, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. So. I, I like hearing your responses. Yeah. It, it's just been frustrating in the past to not get a response. to. to right make so many attempts to get a response and, and not have and, one. And we never, just so you know, again, to make it very, very clear, we have never, uh, I was actually at the meeting where you asked that a invite be given to the town board. Uh, that invite was never received by the town board. If, if I am incorrect in that, I apologize, but it, it was never received by the town board. From in fact, the, uh, and, and again, I'm not opposed to it at all, but I think the key is the plan. It's like anything else, like yes. this plan. Great. Whatever, yeah, I'm, I'm the best to plan. Yes. Yeah. So could we designate someone, I guess Rebecca would be the obvious person for the village board, and someone from the town board to e point people on this and set a date? We, we did. For, for you to report back on, or those who report back? Yeah, we, we, had a, we had a committee in place to do just this uh, last year, and it was Rebecca, myself, Jeff, and I believe Ariana at the time. And um, members of the fire department. Yep. Okay, so. So you still have Dan and I, so it was Ariana, so if you wanted, if someone wanted to join Rebecca, we so, still continue to meet. So you had these meetings and had discussions and there was nothing resulted from it? I'm saying let's, let's move this, how do we move this forward? Yep. If it's a year later, nothing's Actually, happened. Actually, there was. The result of the meeting was that we were going to present to, to the town and village board the um, beginning with the, the, with the idea of moving toward resolutions um, and it stopped there and I, and I have to say I did come to a town board meeting it was not televised Dan Therese was there he heard me speaking to both himself uh, Susan and Jeff on this particular topic and uh, um, instead of hearing answers I was posed with questions which really got us nowhere unfortunately which is why I'm still attempting to bring up the, the uh, conversation. My point is if we're not going to vote tonight to put a fire district on the ballot, let's do something. Well, yeah, it's, it's really... It's done. So, it's yeah, done. It, it's done. I, I imagine yes. that it is too late. Should we even agree to tonight to be able to put it on the ballot? It would be yeah, out. You know, yeah. So let's do something that we can do. And I thought yes. the discussion of the Joint uh, Emergency Response Center, whatever the, the term was used, well, it's interesting, so let's... You know, I, I would say, so, it, it back so we have Rebecca. Anyone else from the village want to volunteer to work with Rebecca on investigating this, this concept so that when we get together at the next joint town village meeting, we can discuss it? Anybody? No. Want to volunteer? Sounds like Tim and Dennis. Okay, so mm -hmm. Dennis and Rebecca will be our... Yeah, so we'll just fire district point people and at our next joint meeting we'll discuss fire districts awesome. thank, you. thank you i would hope that the next joint meeting is going to be in village hall that's generally how we do it okay. yeah. well i think it was our turn but for whatever reason we ended up here tonight who's who's on the town board uh as part of that uh, joint committee myself and dan unless you would okay. like to do it uh, well i could only do it for another two and a half months <laughs> So it, it will be more than happy to help out structure. for two and a half months. They, they, they will, you are more than welcome to attend, though. We will let you know the schedule. Okay. Dan and I will I'll share the that. schedule for anyone. Anyone wishing to attend, we will do it. 
And on that note, do we want to, back to the idea of joint meetings, try to go to monthly meetings again? And we want to try to schedule an October meeting while we're all here. I'm going to make an alternative suggestion since the motion is not yet on the floor. Um, I'm going to suggest that we, uh, instead of trying monthly meetings, which would mean every other meeting for all of us, mm -hmm. uh, that we have a minimum of six joint meetings a year. Sure. Uh, and a calendar year. Let's call it a calendar year so we don't confuse fiscal years. Mm -hmm. And the only reason, and Dan and Tom, Tom, thank you for that. Uh, October for us is very challenging. It would be yeah. akin to asking you guys to meet with us in April. Yeah. Uh, more late March or April. Uh, our next month is, we're already packed. I've already put many, many hours in, and uh, this whole board is about to put in many, many hours on our budget uh, coming up. So I apologize. It's not that we don't want to meet with you. Uh, I think October would be challenging for a joint meeting. What I would hope for is that Dan and myself and Rebecca and Dennis will get together. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, Don and, and the others on the building committee will get together. And then uh, I would like to hope, do you want to try to schedule a November meeting? I would say yes. And uh, Is that notion of having a minimum of six meetings a year uh, acceptable to everybody? Yes. Anyone here? I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. We, want to, we want to formalize it or a nod's good enough? I think a nod is good enough. A nod is good enough. Yeah, we can't okay. commit a future board I'm anyway. For that. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. It has yeah. a wink, too. wink and a nod. <laughs> so, and again, I apologize. October is off. Would anyone like to propose a November date? Yes. Uh, although we do have uh, a holidays built into it, yeah. open. It is a difficult month, but I think we could fit in. And whether we make it uh, at the beginning of one of your meetings. Telephone's out. So do you want to do I it? I got my, I'm good. You want to do it at Village Hall next? I want to do it at Village Hall. And yes. if okay. you guys would like to make it uh, prior to one of your meetings, that would be fine with us also. Is November 11th our first? Uh... Yeah. That is better than staying at someone's thing. Better than staying. State from the 13th to the 20th. Okay. So we're going to meet on the, on the uh, 10th? I'm going to meet on the 10th. That's fine. 11 10, sure. Great. What time, guys? It's 7. 7? So we are going to call it uh, November 10th? Yep. At 7 p.m. At the town, at the, I apologize, at the Village Hall. Village Hall. Okay. And that will be our next joint meeting. Uh, what I would ask is from the town is that uh, Dan, you and I will be tasked with uh, reporting back with uh, information on joint services, uh, fire district, uh, emergency services. And uh, Marty, I would ask that you be prepared along with Dan to report to us back on the potential of having a joint municipal building. I could share, there, there was also uh, an email that went around today from the county regarding an EMS district. They were having some info session on that. Maybe several of us want to attend just for... Do you mind sending it out to the rest of the boards? Yeah. Can I get that? And I think it was sometime in October was the date of that meeting. But I'll, I'll share it with, with everyone. Okay. And also, just so everyone's aware, uh, while we're having this meeting, there's also a meeting going down at the Village Hall, uh, which uh, the county data is, is also participating in. Dennis Doyle was able to come down for the tra transportation implementation. Uh, uh, we have, uh, again, appointed Gail Gowrie as our point person to meet with them and to discuss with the transportation implementation committee uh, with Dennis Doyle as the county representative also on plans in New Paltz, uh, including, uh, I know they came here and presented some opportunities for the bus station, which seemed to have met a few roadblocks, uh, but also they were going to discuss some other opportunities for our community. So we'll be getting an update. I, I imagine at your next board meeting, we'll be getting an update on that also. Yeah, our, vill our village planner's there tonight too. Oh, fantastic. 
Okay. Is this group looking at the funds that the county presently has set aside that we're hearing perhaps it might evaporate if we don't move forward? Or is that a different group? That's the same. The same group. Uh, those funds, though, are funds that have been available, so to speak. Uh, the, the bus station being part of it, uh, they're available. And if anyone has been, I believe their funds, Tim, does this sound correct, that it's 2018, 20. 17. It's a plan. The, the plan goes out for. 19. I apologize. The, the plan is through 2019. There you go, through 2019. So, Marty, these are funds that are earmarked, but they are not guaranteed funds by any means. Uh, but it does take agreement from the hosting community and from the county to. And Gail will be coming back to us with. Gail will be suggestions. reporting back to us and, and the other members, the village has members, so there will be many members meeting on it. And, and again, the last time we saw them in our community was, was the bus station, uh, and I know they're still discussing some of the options yep. for that, for example. Uh, but it's also, uh, and they also worked on plans along with the school district for the uh, safe schools. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there's a new traffic pattern, for example, at the middle school now. Mm -hmm. I don't have any children at that age. Yep. Some of you not. I know some of you have children at that age. I guess that's a yes. There's a so some of their plans have been implemented. Uh, if no one has anything else, I would like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Have, we have uh, one other thing. I apologize. I wanted to make a motion that our village board agree to have the um, town planning board meeting um, public access instead of because I, I think we currently have this. Um, new setup with our camera which somehow would be the how to if, we, if we turn on our modulator if we have a signal from us so right. unless we, we did take a vote to broadcast our next couple of meetings live on channel 23 if we're to have the planning board take precedence over our meeting tomorrow night we would need to okay. formally take that take that action so we're, we're sorting some of that, that um, in terms of how our meetings are recorded, but I just wanted to... <laughs> what time is the town planning board? 7 p.m. 7 p.m., okay. So it is good that we're meeting... So all in favor? Aye. Okay. And so I will, uh, I will make sure, if you also want to email, but I will also give Bob Fagan a call just to make sure and then also you can let your committee know. I have no idea how those switches work down at the village hall, but let them know that. We just want to turn ours on. There you go. Nice. And you're able to record still? Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. So I will also, and uh, I will copy you, Tim, on my email, and I will discuss with Bob Bacon to make sure yeah, that right. this is the, they will be using a live feed from here. Anything okay. else from our side? Dan? All right. Good. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to adjourn. Aye. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks. Move to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.